Hello everyone, welcome to Reading Corner. It's so good to have you here. Do you know what happened last night? There was a big storm. It was really loud and there was lots of thunder and really heavy rain. And my puppy dogs were scared. In fact, my little puppy dog, Oscar, trembled and trembled and trembled because he's very frightened of storms. And when I was getting the books ready today, I thought sometimes, it's hard to be brave when things are strange, when things are, you know, strange noises that you don't know where they're coming from. And it's nice to have someone with you to help you when you're feeling afraid. So I thought I'd find some stories about people and, and animals that were brave. So the first story I have is called The Dress Up Box, and it's about a family called the Frollies. And they have a lovely home, but then they have to move to a new house. And it's about what happens, what helps them in their new house. Then we have a story about a little monster called Bubba. And he wants to go for a walk in the wood with his big bruv. But there's all these strange, scary noises. And then we have the tale of Peter Rabbit. It's about a little rabbit who does things that are a little bit naughty but then he gets very, very frightened. And it's a story about what his adventures were. So we're going to start with the first story called The Dress-Up Box. I know you're going to like these stories. The Frollies rented a fabulous house at 32 Sunshine Avenue. It had a frog pond in the front yard, a bird bath out the back, horses on one side, and their best friends, the Chung family, on the other. There was also a bamboo forest, a haunted shed, and a dress-up box. When the Chungs came over after school, they all crashed through the bamboo forest, crept through the haunted shed fed the horses raced frogs and spied on birds but their favorite game started when mr frolly came home from work that's when they dragged out the dress up box and turned into samurai sam blast off barnaby Magic Millie, Marmosaurus, Mr. Pillowhead, Cowgirl Chloe, and Eric the Egg. But then 32 Sunshine Avenue went up for sale and the Frollies had to move. Even hot chocolates with marshmallows didn't cheer them up. The Frollies had a farewell picnic with the Chungs. They fed the horses, said goodbye to the frogs and birds, crept through the haunted shed, crashed through the bamboo forest and played one last extra long game of Mr Pillowhead. A big truck took the frollies to their new house at 13 Dankwart Drive. It had a tiny backyard, no front garden, a creepy cat on one side and an old opera singer on the other. It had dripping taps, stinky carpets and ants and it was a long way away from the chums. But it did have a spaceship, a spooky tunnel, a pig pen, and a periscope. It had all their old teddies, all their old toys, and the dress-up box. And that made it home. The end. Have you ever had to move house and had to find all your old favourite toys in all the boxes? And like the frollies, you could make all sorts of interesting things like tunnels and spaceships out of all of the moving boxes. I know that's what my kids did when we moved house. 
Now we're going to read about Bubba and Big Bruv and what happens when they go for a walk in their wood. It's called Don't Be Afraid. Come on, said Big Bruv. Let's go for a walk in the big wide wood. I'm scared, said little Bubba. There's nothing to be afraid of, said Big Bruv. Big Bruv held Bubba's hand in his and they went out into the big wide wood. A wild wind raced through the wood, shaking the trees. The trees waved their arms and made rustling music with their new leaves. You see, said Big Bruv, the big wide wood is a wonderful place. But then from over her head came a loud squawk. Bubba turned and ran and dived back into the den. Big Bruv came ambling after. Silly little fella, he said, smiling. There was a squawk, said Bubba. That was just an old crow, said Big Bruv. Squawking is how crows talk to each other. There's nothing to be afraid of. So hand in hand, out they went again. There was a loud squawk from overhead. That's just an old crow, said Bubba. I'm not afraid. Then from nearby came a loud crack. Bubba turned and ran and dived back into the den. Big Bruv came ambling after. Silly little fella, he said, smiling. There was a loud crack, said Bubba. That was just the branch being broken by the wind, said Big Bruv. That's how trees get rid of their dead wood. There's nothing to be afraid of. So hand in hand, out they went again. There was a loud squawk from overhead. That's just an old crow, said Bubba. I'm not afraid. There was a loud crack nearby. That's just a dead branch breaking off in the wind, said Bubba. I am not afraid. Then from close by came a rumbling roar. Bubba turned and ran and dived back into the den. Big Bruv came ambling after. Silly little fella, he said, smiling. There was a rumbling roar, said Bubba. That was thunder said Big Bruv. That's just the clouds rubbing each other up the wrong way. There's nothing to be afraid of. So hand in hand, out they went again. There was a loud squawk from overhead. That's just an old crow, said Bubba. I'm not afraid. There was a loud crack nearby. That's just a dead branch breaking off in the wind, said Bubba. I'm not afraid. There was a rumbling roar close by. That's just thunder, said Bubba. I'm not afraid. A wild wind raced through the wood, shaking the trees. The trees waved their arms and made rustling music with their new leaves. The big wide wood is a wonderful place, said Bubba. And to show he was not afraid, he let go of Big Bruv's hand and ran off ahead among the trees. Big Bruv followed, trying to see where Bubba had gone. Then suddenly, something sprang out from behind a tree and made a loud boo. Big Bruv jumped. Oh, Bubba, you scared me, he said, smiling. Silly Big Bruv, said Bubba. It's only me. There's nothing to be afraid of. And together on they went, hand in hand, exploring the big, wide, wonderful wood. Sometimes if you're feeling a bit scared, it's nice to hold the hand of someone that you really trust. Someone, it might be your big brother or sister, it might be your mum or dad, it might be your nana might be a pop, might be just your best friend. But as long as you have a, a hand to hold, you can feel a little bit braver, can't you? Now we're going to read the tale of Peter Rabbit and all the mischief and adventures that Peter gets up to. 
And you may have heard of The Tale of Peter Rabbit as a movie. This was a book written for little people a long, long time ago by a wonderful lady called Beatrix Potter. She drew the pictures as well as wrote the story, and I hope that you enjoy it. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Oh dear. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. And rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed, Catty shoe! And Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright and he had not, he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. 
she only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some blackcurrant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter, one tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. I really hope you liked these stories today. And I hope that you have some shiny weather where you are. But if there is a rumbly, tumbly, thundery storm, I hope that you have someone nice to hold a hand and help you not be so scared. I loved reading to you today. I really love when you come to visit me at Reading Corner. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. But until then, bye for now.